The Mongolian Postal Service is launching a campaign to get everyone using new technology to revolutionise delivery services. It's working with a British made service called What Three Words, which has given everyone in the world a new, more accurate address. The app has divided the earth into three metre by three metre squares and given each square a three word address. Confused? Insights Chloe Culpan explains. In London, deliveries are big business. Like many cities around the world, everywhere has an address and people and stuff generally make it to their destination. But even in countries with sophisticated systems, sometimes postal codes don't work. From rural buildings to fields full of people in the middle of nowhere. This year, What Three Words was used by medical staff at Britain's world-famous Glastonbury Music Festival to locate patients among the crowds more easily. In sites like Glastonbury, you've got 200,000 people uh, in a field with no kind of infrastructure or way of describing locations. And festival medical services have to get medical care to the right point um, very quickly. So they use What Three Words by communicating three word address over the radio and it means that their responders all over the site communicate with the headquarters. The United Nations estimates that four billion people do not have a street name or house number but now everyone has a three word address and it's catching on. Couriers in Mongolia, the Middle East, Yemen and Brazil are now delivering to more places than ever including Rio's favelas. Address is really important in, in all countries in the world and um, you know, Brazil for example um, in, in Rio, you've got a lot of parts of the cities and the favelas where there is no formal street address naming system. Uh, and there's companies like Cartero Amigo, the courier company who actually uh, the packages to people's house where they have no address. But this isn't the only app trying to change the world. Snoocode has recently seen success in Ghana. The app allows people to log in and get a unique alphanumeric code for their location, which sticks forever. The company has also developed Code Red, so people calling for the emergency services will be found much faster. TomTom's map code does a similar thing using latitude and longitude, but there are questions about how easy codes are to remember. No issue for some of the developing technologies which might use it. Something like a drone needs to land at an exact location, so using a 3 meter by 3 meter address could really work well for them. And as drones are likely to be used more and more in the future, um, this address system really could take off. So whether we're using a code or three words to deliver something or find somewhere, it seems there's now no excuse for getting lost. Chloe Culpin reporting for Insight. To learn a little more about this, I'm joined now by Claire Jones, who's Head of Global Partnerships at What Three Words. And by Skype, we're joined by Professor Robert Barr, who's the Chairman of Manchester Geomatics. Um, Claire, thanks for being with us. You found your way to our studios. Did you use three words to get here? Uh, I would have done if I'd been given them, but it, it was, there was a description along to find this hidden door, so it would have been a very useful use case. OK. We understand a little bit how it all works. Does it rely on for us to use English words, or could we use words in any language? So, We've done the whole world in English, so as an English speaker, mostly when I'm travelling, I use the English version, wherever I am, but we've also done it in 11 other languages. So in Mongolia, for example, um, in this example we're just talking about, it's in Mongolian, so the whole world is mapped with three words in Mongolian. Why did you think GPS is not good enough? We have a good system at the moment, but you've come up with another one. Well, ours is based on GPS, in fact. So it is using GPS, it's using GPS technology, but what it's doing is giving those GPS coordinates a name that's sayable and usable. So I've never had anybody say to me, let's meet for a drink at 1.872654, etc. So the idea was to make a human-friendly version of GPS coordinates. Let's bring in Professor Robert Barr. Do you think GPS alone was not good enough for us and we could do with another few systems? Uh, it certainly wasn't good enough. It's not the way that people think. Uh, we get taught how to use map coordinates and use ordnance survey maps at school, but very few people then carry on to use them. Postcodes work quite well, but even those aren't words, at least they're memorable. But three English words is a very original idea. And effective in getting through to those cases when, as you say, a string of numbers really doesn't cut the mustard. 
Very much so. Uh, in Britain, 60% of buildings have a postcode, 40% don't. If you want to try to get to any of those, a normal postal address won't work, whereas a what three words address would work. We'll come back to a use in a moment, but let me just ask you about the rival to GPS, because this is something that all mapping technologies, I think, are embracing. Europeans have, for what reason we don't quite understand, have decided they want their own version. They don't want to trust the American GPS system. Galileo is uh, an extension of GPS. Effectively, there is a global uh, cooperation to make sure that uh, satellite navigation systems are available all over the world, not dependent on any one country. So I think Galileo is a good addition to the American system rather than replacement for it. But it is designed, is it not, to be just in case the American system is turned off or... Uh, is limited indeed, in some way. Indeed. I won't suggest that uh, if a certain event happened in November, that could happen, but it was a presidential directive that made GPS available to the public. A presidential directive could make it unavailable to the public. We then have to rely on Russian signals rather than having our own. So I think having the European Galileo system is really very important. I'd better ask Claire about that. Could you adapt to Galileo if the European system became, you know, on stream? So our, our, te our technology is, is a layer that you, it labels those, those coordinates and those addresses. So it's a layer you can use in any map. And if you've got more accurate GPS signals, that means you'll, you'll find it easier to find the three-word address. So you can apply it to any technology Yes, there. but it will always be three metres by three metres. So we're not trying to get more accurate than three metres. Three metres is, is the perfect size for us. Why did you choose that? Is... So firstly, the, the right number of words. Um, and it's also, we're about being human friendly. So if, if you're three meters uh, away from something, you can usually see it. It's accessible, it's usable. It means we can do just three words and that gives us 57 trillion combinations. And of course, it doesn't rely on feature sets, does it? Because you could um, tell somebody, well, it's just past that building. It's past the big red tower block the tower block might get knocked down in a week or two and then suddenly it's not there. Exactly, and, and certainly what we found in developing countries is sometimes their whole address system is based on those kind of descriptive addresses. And if you think about countries like Ecuador where they had the dis descriptive addressing systems and then they had an earthquake, actually you can't use those anymore. You're ending up with people saying where the red tower used to be. Yeah. And that's very, very difficult to use and it's very inaccurate. But and the words still work, do they? The words still work and they, and they never change. So once, if I say to somebody, meet me at broccoli cone sands which is an address in a park in Istanbul that's one address it's unique and it's never going to change so if I told you to meet me there in 10 years we could meet there and it would be the same place who do you think is going to find this technology most useful it's a big question it's one of those pieces of technology that's used in all kinds of ways around the world already so uh, it's very very useful in logistics and postal delivery as we've seen so in Mongolia for example it's also really powerful for travel and tourism so if you think about when you're traveling abroad you may, may not be able to speak the language so it's quite difficult to use addressing systems when they do exist and certainly if you're going to rural Ghana they don't exist at all and so this is really really powerful way for tourist agencies, for travel companies to say, here's a three-word address of an amazing place to visit. And in fact, in Mongolia, the tourist board of Ulaanbaatar actually now list three-word addresses for all the tourist hotspots to visit in the capital. Professor, do you think the old skills of cartography, making maps and printing them on paper or something more resilient, are going to fade away altogether? No, I think the cartography has made the jump from paper to screen uh, seamlessly. And in fact, digital cartography has made paper cartography a lot more popular. So I don't think that those skills will disappear. But locating things on a map has always been a problem. Uh, and that's why uh, having a new uh, person-friendly mechanism for finding your way around maps is going to be really helpful. But as I suppose, I mean, Facebook's intent, is it? to provide internet access to the whole globe, particularly the third of it that can't at the moment. We will all have a handheld device, probably every human being on the planet, sooner or later, which no doubt will have mapping technology on it. Yes, but it's not just having a map, it's knowing where you are on the map. Uh, and in fact, a map is quite an abstract view of the world. You want to go from place to place, you want to meet somebody at a particular place. Just seeing a map 
uh, doesn't necessarily help you to find that place. You need some way of locating yourself on that map. And that's why things that make that easier are important. Have you embraced, Claire Jones, the navigation to get me from one set of three words to the next three words, or are you working with partners on that? We're working with partners. So although we have an app and it's free, you can download it anywhere, actually what's really exciting for us and what's driven the growth of the business is that we have an API. Uh, which is a bit of code that you can build into other apps. So, for example, NavMe, which is the world's biggest offline navigation app, and you can get it on your phone. It's also free. Uh, they've built in our technology. So I can route from uh, Slug Vines Bucket to Index Home Raft, and I can simply type those three words in, and NavMe will route me turn by turn directions, all of that turn left now, uh, go for 100 meters, all of those routing things we're used to in SatNavs, you can get that with the added power of knowing exactly where you're going. See, it does sound slightly absurd. It does. Do you manage to get over that, or is uh, that part of the selling of it? You know, it's one of the things where it, it, it's, it captures the imagination, but the key thing is it's really useful. And so it might be slightly strange to say to somebody, come to our office at Index Home Raft, but when they discover that gets you to the exact front door, they realise how useful it is. And you can tell them which parking space to go You can tell well. them exactly which parking okay. space. Uh, Claire Jones, thank you very much indeed. And uh, Robert Barr, our professor as well, thank you.